it's time for you to lawyer up in the latest Rock Manor Games card game Lawyer Up by Sam Bailey and Mike Nade. And this is a two player game that takes approximately 45 minutes. In the game, you're going to be choosing a case and then each side will be playing as either the prosecution or the defense, defending a client who may have done something not so good or may in fact be innocent. I have specifically the uh, prototype version, which is just one single case, which represents Jessica Fairmont, and as you choose to defend or prosecute her, your objective is to sway the jury. The jury can go one way or the other, depending on the cards you play, based on the witnesses that are present during the trial. You'll call a witness, play cards back and forth, try and convince the judge that what you're doing is right, as well as convincing the jury that they, your specific client is innocent or guilty based on cards you play. A card might be something like the murder weapon, and then in fact, the defense goes, that in fact is not the murder weapon, I have the real murder weapon. Or maybe they say, oh, see my client, uh, his her boyfriend was actually nowhere near the scene of the crime because they were at their ex-wife's house. And then the prosecution goes, well actually, it turns out that they in fact were at the scene of the crime, look at the fingerprints that just so happened to be next to the mirror or whatever. And that's the basic idea of the game, playing cards based on the specific witnesses and their characteristics, attempting to gather evidence and other crucial information to sway the jury. At the end of the game, if the jury all thinks that the client did it, you're going to lose the game. However, if the jury thinks that, or if at least one person in the jury thinks that your client didn't do it, you are going to be okay, and vice versa for the prosecution. And if you can convince them by the time all the witnesses have been chosen out for that specific case, you'll win the game. There's a lot of different cases and a lot of different uh, choices as to how you want to set up your deck. There's a drafting aspect to the game as well, which we'll go ahead and get down below and I'll get into the game and how it plays, how you set it up, and then we'll come up and discuss Lawyer up. Jessica Fairmont is now on trial. She was found hovering over her father's dead corpse in this specific introductory campaign for the game Lawyer Up. The defense is on one side and the prosecution on the other. Let's go ahead and discuss the setup for the game before we get into how to play. First of all, each the defense and prosecution will get these little meters here, which they will be using as they try to convince uh, the different specific uh, witnesses throughout the game, trying to sway one side or the other by gaining point value. And so this is the way you'll be doing that. You'll be calculating, oh, this is my side has five, my side has four. Additionally, each player is going to get these three specific cards here. They're called strategy cards, and they'll select one and put it next to them. This is what they're going to be using to try to win the game based on the symbols here as well as anything that has to do with their closing statements and witnesses. So basically this character, this player here, the prosecution wants characters with hearts and with minds to be on their side of the board. And the defense wants characters with the balancing symbol and the clue symbol on their side. The rest of these cards will be removed. Then add all the witnesses found here from the witness deck here and place them here. There should be nine total because after nine witnesses have been called, the game will end. Also, place the judge favoring the prosecution. This is the prosecution side. The other side is blue favoring the defense. Each player is also going to be getting a sidebar and these objection tokens. Objection tokens are counter tokens that can stop a player from playing a card. The sidebar will change the judge's favor, which will help in certain ways based on cards that are played. Additionally, in this specific case, the bloody knife card will go to the prosecution, which they believe to be the murder weapon, and Jessica Fairmont will go to the defense. The defense will actually have the opportunity to call her as opposed to one of these witnesses here. There's also deck management that you'll be setting up, as well as a draft that basically means you'll be drawing cards from a deck, choosing one to put in your deck, one to put in your opponents, and one to be discarded. I've already went ahead and set that up though, so they're placed here, the defense deck and the prosecution deck, with the additional cards not used set aside. The lawyer deck is going to be also shuffled and set here because surprise wit or sorry, the witness deck may be placed here because surprise witnesses may be called upon and when that happens you'll be using this deck here. The last thing you'll need to do is you're going to need to take all of these jurors here and place them out one through six, one through six. Additionally, the first one through six are going to favor the prosecution, so you're going to place tokens randomly on this side of their board, the first red side next to the lock symbol. Certain other specific, specific games are going to call for this side here, which won't have a lock symbol, but because we're playing this specific one, we're placing these here next to the lock symbol, and the same goes for the defense with the uh, jurors one through six on the bottom. All of these tokens are also randomized, of course, and that's pretty much the setup for the game. 
Let's go ahead and get into how to play the game now. To begin the game, you're simply going to go ahead and have each player draw five cards. And those cards are going to be used to convince the specific uh, the specific witnesses or the jurors, I suppose. You're going to be using these cards to influence uh, these guys here and also basically question these witnesses here. The prosecution will begin first, and they are going to begin by simply calling one of these witnesses here. The top witnesses here favor the prosecution, and the bottom ones favor the defense. And how it works is the prosecution will go ahead and choose one of these here and place it next to them, or facing them. And after you choose one, you're going to then turn it left. And the reason why you do that is because there's symbols here, here, and there's also these little uh, letters and numbers. This P means prosecution, the D means defense, and the N over here means neutral. So in this case, if you're calling Benjamin Davids as the prosecution, turning it to the left here is gonna give the prosecution four points to convince these guys over here that the uh, defendant, Jessica Fairmont, is guilty. That's a nice way to start. Whereas the prosecution's plus two over here for the defense is going to actually give the defense nothing because defense is only gonna get points or gonna get currency or whatever you wanna call it for each of the numbers labeled in neutral or in the blue D for defense. So right now it's four to zero. After that happens, go ahead and add the bloody knife, specifically for this campaign or this specific trial, to the prosecution's hand. And players are then going to take turns one at a time by either A, you could choose to play a card here, B, you could choose to use the sidebar to turn the judge in your favor. Or C, you can play a card down. Uh, certain ones will let you do that. I don't think I have any in this specific hand here, but they're basically going to be played down onto the field. And you could also spend an action to use those cards as well. So, now that we've gone ahead and called this witness here, there is also effects that take place when you call a witness. And specifically, it'll tell you down here. This says called, so you're gonna sway one specific red juror. And you're gonna look here, there's a heart. You can go ahead and sway them. Swaying a juror means you're pushing it into your favor. If it ever says to sway into the opposite way, you can choose, you choose to not do that. You're only ever gonna benefit you with a sway. And locking will lock, so this is a lock and this is a sway. So you're gonna sway it over to the red, that's good for you, that pushes the specific uh, juror, which got a defense of three, one over, which is exactly what you wanna do. Then after that, remember, if the prosecution wins in this specific case here, or with this specific witness here, that person, that prosecution is gonna get to lock two of the thumbs up ones. Wow, that's really good. And then you're gonna simply play cards, and playing cards is very simple. You're going to look at these symbols here, look at the cards in your hand, and play a card that matches one of those symbols. So for instance, I can go ahead and play this one here. That is the prepared exhibit, and it's an evidence card. So basically what it says here is if this is the last card on the stack and you win, then you're going to get victory, which will give you two influence for each evidence in your examination. So that can actually influence these guys even more. Fairly useful. He's played a card, so now this player is going to go ahead and do the same, playing maybe, I don't know, home videos as evidence. And when you play a card that has examination on it, this one says I can sway a heart, which is nice. I'm going to actually go ahead and sway this one one over, so it counteracts this card here. And now the defense has one point, plus zero, and the prosecution has four, plus a neutral, which is one, so five, five to one. And it's going to go back once again. This player is going to look around. Remember, some cards in your hand might be defense cards or prosecution based on when you were doing the draft. Let's go ahead and play this one here, covering the victory effect, but still matching the symbols to one of these cards, one of these symbols here now. We've got the, we've got the mind in the mind. Another plus to the prosecution. Examination, if Dr. Maelstrom is the witness, draw one augment from your discard. And the augments are the ones that go onto the field. And if this is the last card, he'll get to lock one of these two symbols. And then it'll be the defense's turn once again. And the defense can choose to pass as well as an action. Passing basically means you're done, you can't do anything, or you choose not to do anything. In which case, you're gonna add up the total value here, and here, and based on the difference, you're going to sway the jury. And in this case, four, five, six, seven, compared to one, six is the difference. And you're gonna look at these guys and based on their defense is how you can push them. And in this case, that's a three, this is a two. So if I wanted to and I had six, I can go three, which now I'm at three left. And then I have two, I can push this one here, now I'm at one left, and then one, and now I'm at zero. This witness would go to the winner. These cards would be discarded. And you would continue drawing up your hand, 
choosing a new witness if you were the defense because they lost specifically, so whoever loses the witness is going to call the next one, and continuing the game just like that. Matching symbols, choosing to gather the best witnesses possible and play the best combination of cards in your hand, as well as, of course, the witness being Jessica Fairmont being chosen by the defense. They can use her if they want, but she has specific rules to how she functions. At the end of the game, players are going to score points based on the witnesses they gathered. And the points are actually just going to be used for persuasion because you're going to want to persuade all of these guys to one side or the other. And they'll get five points for each symbol, for each witness on their side. So for instance, if I had this one over here, if I actually succeeded in this one, that one has both symbols I need, which is 10 points. And let's say that this side over here at these two, you're going to have a mind and a heart. So mind, heart, mind, heart, that's 20. 20 minus 10, because this is the winning side, 10 left over. You can use those 10 points to sway these guys here. And like I said before, at the end of the game, if you're able to sway all of these guys over to the far red side, that is a lock side, then the prosecution is going to be the winner. And if you do the, if at least one of these guys is not on the lock side, then the defense will be the winner. Minor rules clarification. So the way you win the game if you're the prosecution is if at the end of the game you've pushed or swayed all of the, the jurors onto the red area. It doesn't necessarily need to be in the locked area. And if you are the defense, at least one juror has to be in the blue. And if at least one is in the blue, then there is reasonable doubt there, which means that you win the game. So that is a small one. It's not all the way to the lock side. However, when you lock a character, the defense is going to be unlikely able to pull a character out of lock because locked characters are basically like stubborn jurors who are instantly like okay she's guilty period and there's nothing that's going to change my mind it's also a way for uh the prosecution to have a little bit of a uh, a more likelihood of keeping everything pushed because it's a tough job to push everybody over into the red area this game feels like you're in court. It feels like you're having a mental battle of wills, an argument back and forth, where you're playing a card on top of another card that matches because it makes sense. And then you say, oh, I've got the knife. Oh, I've got the, the actual knife. Or I've got the alibi. Oh, your alibi is messed up. Or just simply stacking evidence upon evidence to convince the jurors that your witness is either credible or not very credible. Uh, there's going to be specific abilities that come down the cards. There's specific things you'll be able to utilize, which we didn't talk about a lot, which are like procedure cards here. This one here is basically a surprise witness. If the judge is favorable to you, you will then use this card from your field or your tableau area, and that will be your action. The judge will go be favorable to your opponent, and then you'll get to put a new witness out instead of the witness that's currently in play. These are very powerful cards, but because of the way they, they basically switch the judge over to somebody else's favor, they don't let you trigger abilities like crazy. And of course, in each scenario, it's going to be different. There's different win conditions for each scenario, and there's also different cards you'll be getting to utilize, whether it be the special knife card, which is a doozy. This card is hard to defeat because uh, it's got a lot. It's got five on the prosecution, and you can get this card back and reuse it from your discard pile with certain cards in your deck. Uh, as well as, of course, if you want, you can use as a defense the main person on trial. And she brings a little bit of a twist to the game. I'll go ahead and read her really quick. Basically, she says you can only be called by the defense, and she gives plus six to the defense and nothing to the prosecution. And when she's called, you have to unlock three bias. The prosecution claims one available witness and refreshes one objection which if you understand objections, you know how powerful they are. Objections will let you stop players from playing arguments, which is a great way in court when somebody brings up something that's not very relevant or minimalizes something that you can call, oh, objection on that specific thing because you are incorrect or that statement makes no sense. And you can only use these actions three times in a game unless cards trigger that to happen. Otherwise, she is one specific way in which one of those objections can come back to you. And even using this bench token here, only one of them, but there's certain ways you can get them back. Each of the witnesses focus on certain things and will function in a different way based on how the argumentation is going. Playing the cards is great. It feels like you're trying to make the best combination. You want to save certain cards for specific moments, for specific characters, because certain cards trigger better with other characters. But if you lose this witness, maybe it's going to hurt you too much. The difference can be great and it can be very challenging for the defense to come back if pushed too far over the edge. Uh, what's really cool about this game, in my opinion, too, is the fact that the game flows very well. I play my card, you play your card, we go, we're going and we're going and we're going and we, we have that storyline that kind of interacts in our head. Most of the times when we were playing this game, we were actually just 
basically are paying the game. Oh, she's not guilty because of this and that. Oh, well, you didn't have the evidence and blah, blah, blah. And it had that feeling in the game of actually being a part of a court or a trial. This is probably the best game I've ever played as far as this specific theme goes. It brings out that theme incredibly well. Now, it's only a two-player game, which makes sense because you're playing against the prosecution of the defense, but if you wanted to play more players, it would basically be a team game, and that could work, but realistically, it functions more at two players, obviously. Um, I like the fact, too, that new witnesses can come out and surprise cards can change the way the game works because you have to be careful, and the reason why that is is because there's a draft. At the beginning of the game, the setup is about a third of the game because you need to make sure your deck is stacked with the best possible way for you to win based on the witnesses you have based on the specific uh these cards here the uh strategy cards and these are for the certain witnesses and certain cards will function better with certain witnesses so you have to kind of align everything into your favor it reminds me of one of those shows lie to me where they have to basically determine what witnesses are going to go onto the you know what, what juror is going to be on the, the stand or whatever or in the in, in the pews based on their credentials and their and what what evidence they have and whether or not they're going to do well for that specific case etc etc and i think you get the idea of that overall really great theme for this game very high tension very aggressive style gameplay two players and it has this um interesting aspect of rem rem reminding yourself to actually play all the abilities on the cards this is my one slight negative in the game is there's a lot to remember calling witnesses you might forget to do something like that or specific cards might trigger specific things that you might not remember to do just because there's a lot going on when you're playing the game even though it's relatively simply what you're doing, simple what your turn has it's there's obviously always something you can forget and that does happen in this game regardless though i really really enjoyed lawyer up i think this is probably one of my favorite games from them if not my favorite current game from uh from Rock Manor Games, Rock Manor, yeah, Rock Manor Games. Uh, I would definitely, definitely suggest you check out the game if you like two-player games that are aggressive, that involve this lawyer argumentation type of thing. But just remember, it is definitely an aggressive game. Overall, very, very enjoyable.